on promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God our Savior, standing on the promises, standing on the promises, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages as His praise is reign, glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God. Good morning, kids, and welcome to today's Sunday school. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, thank you for gathering us all here together once again to study your word. Please help us as we read your word and as we listen to this lesson to be blessed. And please help us to do everything that we learn today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's lesson is a very interesting one. I have some few things to show you. Take a look at this. Can you see that? Doesn't that look yummy? Or how about if I was to give you this and one of these? What if I gave you two chocolate bars? Wouldn't that be very nice? Or how about this? I have a game console here. Wouldn't this be so much fun to play with? Or how about if I had this too? Wow, I could play so many games on this. What if I gave you both of these? Or take a look at this. How does this look? Very tasty. What if I gave you two packets of crisps? Wouldn't that be lovely? So, this links to today's lesson. The lesson title is, Elisha saw it happen. The memory verse is from Second Kings chapter 2, verse 9. Let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Can you say that after me, children? Let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Well done. The Bible text for today is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 to 21, and 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 15. We're going to read just a few of the verses. Get out your Bibles and follow along. Okay, children, are you ready? Let's read from our Bibles. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 and 20. 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was ploughing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. 20. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my mother and father goodbye, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again. For what have I done to thee? Our next Bible passage to read from is 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1, 2, 8 to 14. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. 2. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Verse 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together, and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. 9. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. 
10. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. 11. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. 12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. 13. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. 14. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. We can close our Bibles there for now. So, today's lesson is all about Elijah and Elisha. Elijah was a prophet of God, and he had been doing God's work for a long time. At this point, he was very tired and he wanted God to come and take him to heaven. But God knew also that someone needed to continue this very important work. So he told Elijah that he would need to find somebody else to follow on in his footsteps. So as we read in our scripture, we could see that Elisha was the person chosen to continue Elijah's great work. When Elijah met Elisha, he put his cloak on him. And this was a sign that he was giving him a responsibility. He was promoting him to a higher calling. So Elisha very obediently ran and said goodbye to his mother and his father the very same day. Imagine that. Would you say goodbye to your mother and father the very same day someone calls you to come and do something? It's a very hard thing to do. But Elisha did it. He was very obedient. So he followed Elijah and went about doing God's work. After that, Elisha continued to follow him. There would even be times when Elijah would say to him, you can wait here whilst I go and do this and I'll be back. And Elisha would say, no, wherever you go, I go. Can you hear that, kids? See how obedient Elisha was. Even when he wasn't asked to come, he wanted to follow because he knew following God would bring blessings. And so after this, Elijah knew the time was coming near when he would need to be taken into heaven. And so he asked Elisha, he said, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? And Elisha said he would want a double portion of the spirit that was on Elijah. And Elisha, Elijah said, you've asked a very hard thing, but if you see me when I go into heaven, this will be done for you. And guess what, kids? Just as Elijah was taken up into heaven when he had hit the water with his cloak and the sea parted and they had walked on dry ground, the whirlwind and the chariots and horses came and took Elijah away and Elisha saw him go. And because of that, he received a double portion of the spirit that was on Elijah. So he could do everything Elijah did and more. So Elisha went on to do many more miracles than Elijah even did when he was a prophet because he had a double portion of God's spirit. Isn't that amazing? I know that is so amazing. So today's key statement is when I follow God, he will bless me. Isn't that right, kids? Can we see that in today's lesson? When Elisha decided to follow God faithfully and listen to what Elijah had instructed him to do by following quickly as well at that, God blessed him. So if we choose to follow God, God will bless us. Isn't that a great thing? Don't we want to be blessed by God? I thought so. I thought that might be your answer. So I think we should pray in our hearts as we go throughout this week, we should pray that God will help us to follow. That might mean following your mum when she asks you to do something or your dad or following your teacher's instructions. Those are all different ways we can follow and God will bless us for doing it obediently. The activity for two to five year olds is footprints, which is on page six. It says, 
Follow the footprints by drawing a line between them to see some of the places where Elisha followed Elijah. And the activity for the six to eight year olds is a double portion, which says, put the story of Elijah and Elisha in the right order by writing the correct number in the small circles. I hope you do those activities, children, and have fun whilst you do them. Hopefully it helps you remember what we studied today and hopefully it reminds you how important it is to follow and how to be obedient. Next week's lesson is titled Elisha Works for God. That's lesson 10D, Elisha Works for God. The Bible text will be 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 to 7 and 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 1 to 7. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, children. I hope you remember the key statement and hope that this lesson follows you throughout the week and that you follow God. Bye! Good morning, children. Happy Sunday to you. You are welcome to Sunday school today. Today, we are going to learn a very good lesson tied to convinced of sin. Let's say together, convinced of sin. Let's take our Bible. We are going to read from Psalm 38, verse 1 to 18, and then at chapter 24, verse 24 to 27. We are not going to read all the verses. We are going to read Psalm 38, verse 1 to 4, 17 and 18. And then at chapter 24 to 27, verse 1. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither shall I stand me in thy hot displeasure. 2. For the arrow stick fast in me, and the hand presses me so. 3. And 4. Verse 4. For my iniquities are gone over my head as an heavy body. They are too heavy for me. 17. For I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me. 18. For I will declare my iniquity, I will be sorry for my sorrow. Let's open to Acts chapter 24, verse 24 to 27. Acts chapter 24, verse 24 to 27. 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. 25. And as a reason of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. 26. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him. Wherefore, he sent for him the offner and commune with him. 27. But after two years, precious Festus came into Felix's room. And Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, let Paul back. Now, children, let's listen to the lesson. The title of the lesson again, which is Convinced of Sin. And we have a memory verse in this lesson to read. So children, let's read our memory verse together at the count of two. One, two. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. John chapter 6 verse 44. Thank you. We all know what sin is. You are in answer class. When you do something wrong, when you are doing bad things, stealing, lying, fighting, those are sin. And when you are convinced of the sin, that is, you realize, you know that those things are not good. That is convinced of sin. In our last previous lesson you've been learning, like two weeks ago now, you know, when Adam and Eve went to the garden and did the wrong thing, God told them not to eat that fruit. And they did. They disobeyed. That's a sin. And the other lesson last week, God sent Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. So today we are learning that when you are convinced of your sin, you know, you realize that you have done something wrong. So last week we have been told that Jesus Christ has come. 
So in this our lesson now, we are going to learn how in the book of Psalm, how the psalmist is saying that he has a, a lot of said, Oh Lord, rebuke me not in that rod. That is, he's begging God not to rebuke him in his, in, in his bad ways. So whatever the bad way you have this morning, you are going to beg God to help you, to forgive you your sin. In verse 4, he said, my, For my iniquities are gone over my head as an heavy body. They are too heavy for me. When you commit a lot of sin, it will be too heavy for you. You won't be able to rest. You won't be able to do anything. It's 17 said, for I am ready to rot, and my sorrow is continually before me. So it's very sorrowful. If you look at this picture, you see, look at that child. He couldn't sleep. Look, she's waking up, standing up, worried, sad, crying, because iniquities are too heavy. The body is too much for him. He couldn't sleep. So God is telling us today, those body. In verse 18, he said, For I will declare my iniquity, I will be sorry for my sin. That's verse 18 of our lesson. This morning, God is telling us to be sorry for our iniquity, for our sin, because Jesus Christ, like last week, has come to redeem us from our sin. Just like the story we learned, we read in our lesson, where Mercy went with faith to, to, to church and listened to the word of God. The pastor said, you will not go to heaven. You know how we've been, told, we've been told that heaven is a beautiful place. And it was like she was like worried when she got home. She couldn't sleep. She was worried. What did she do? She quickly ran to the pastor and told the pastor, what is wrong with me? And the pastor said, you are convinced of your sin. Conviction of sin will make you to repent. So the pastor said, you have to repent from your sin. Since you acknowledge, you know, you, are, you realize now that you have committed sin. Instead of worrying and being, not going back, doing good. So children, if you have been stealing your friend's robber, fighting, or being nothing at home, taking mommy things, this morning God said, you need to change from your sin. Realize that you are a sinner and God will forgive you. Jesus don't want us to be like Felix in where we read in Acts chapter 24, verse 24 to 27. Felix knew that Paul was a good man. He sent for him. And Paul preached about Christ, about forgiving of sin, about changing from the sin, the bad way. He listened, he knew. What did he do? He told Paul, go. Next time, maybe. So this morning, you have come to church. God is telling us that we should realize and change from our sins like mercy did. Don't do like Felix and said, maybe next week I will change from my sin. No. Last week we've been told that Jesus Christ has come, our Redeemer. He has died for our sin. And I don't want, I know you don't want Jesus Christ to die just like that. So you need to tell God to forgive you. Don't be like Felix and that said next time. Something can happen next week. We don't know what will happen. Jesus Christ can come. The rapture can take place. And you'll be left behind, worrying this bad life. Why others that have confessed and God has forgiven them, they've gone to heaven, enjoying the golden, the beautiful things, the golden, you'll be, you'll be in a beautiful house, a mansion. It's a beautiful place. So therefore, God is telling us this morning to realize, confess our sin, Forsake it, pray for salvation, and Jesus answer us in Jesus' name. Now let's answer one or two questions in order to understand the lesson more better. Question number one: What is conviction? Conviction is when you realize that you are a sinner, when you know that you are a sinner or you've done something wrong. You are convinced that yes, it's wrong. Question number two. In our answer story, what did Mercy do when she left, when she felt conviction? What did she do? She ran to the pastor. And the pastor explained to him that that is sin in you. So when you know that you have committed sin, what do you do? You go to God, kneel down and pray, Jesus, forgive me. I will not lie again. I will not steal again. Write my name in the book of life and Jesus will forgive you. Just like the other story I told you, why that child was so sad. And the other one was what? Happy, can sleep. And wake up very well. 
Question number three. What do you think might have happened if Mercy had ignored the conviction she felt? If she ignored it, she won't be able to sleep. She would feel sick, headache, and she might die. What happens? She won't go to heaven. She'll go to hellfire where she'll be burning throughout her life. Suffering throughout her life. If she refused to change, she'll be sick. And she might die. And be continuing doing the wrong thing. So this morning, we have had the word of God. And last week, we've been told, Jesus' Redeemer has come. So today, we have had the word of God. You need to listen. You have listened. You need to go to God in prayer. Jesus, forgive me my sin. I don't want to be sad again. I don't want to be worried again. I don't want to be sick again. I don't want to do evil things again. Write my name in the book of life. I won't do them again, God, if you forgive me. And pray, Jesus will forgive you. Jesus will help you. And Jesus will save your soul in Jesus' name. Activities for this lesson has been displayed. It says, read through the following scripture about people who felt conviction and what they did about it. Fill in the answers on the blank lines. Next week's lesson is lesson 95. Which direction? Lesson 95, which direction? Memory verse can be found in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7. That is our lesson, children. Let us pray. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you this morning for bringing us to this class. We thank you for sending Jesus Christ to redeem us from our sin. We thank you for this lesson today that we realize that we are sinners. We thank you for saving our soul. We thank you for our family. We thank you for everyone. Father, come and save us. Come and satisfy us. Come and baptize us with the Spirit of God, O Lord, so that we will be able to be with you in heaven and enjoy the heavenly beautiful things. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, children. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.